verses in the Bible is John chapter 5, verse 20. Jesus had just healed the man at the pool of Bethesda, and they're wanting to stone him. And he's going, why are you wanting to stone me? I showed you this that you may marvel. We typically don't think of God or don't think of the Lord Jesus as someone who wants to fascinate us. And yet, God is a person. He's real. He's the living God. He's, in fact, we draw personality and the best, that which is good and true and beautiful about human personality comes from being made in His image. He is personhood in all of its fullness. And so I, I think sometimes we don't think of God as the God of play or the God who likes to fascinate or the God who might like to mesmerize us. But um, I remember uh, when I learned that God is a lot more dynamic and a lot more interactive than I used to give him credit for. And most of us in religious expressions give him credit for. I remember my mother had just died after an eight year bout with cancer. My father had, had um, purchased a, an Alaskan cruise. We would fly into um, Fairbanks and Anchorage and we would go through D uh, Denali National Park and, and um, then we would go down and get on a cruise for seven days to go through the inside passage and he had bought a really nice room with a window so that my mother, it would be, you know, unless the Lord healed her, it would be one of their last times to really bond together. But my mother died a month before going on the cruise. And um, my father was, you know, um, devastated in some ways and tired from the battle. And my heart was really sad. My mother was a, an extraordinary woman who loved Jesus and a beautiful voice in the choir and, and um, very capable, a salutatorian of our high school and, and um, just faithful, servant, organized, classy, beautiful, and um, smart. But she, she had just died and I remember my father asked me to go on the cruise with him and so I did and to, to be there with him and to try to comfort him as much as I could and just to be present. And I can remember I was on top of the, the, the top deck of the ship and I'm looking out and we're going, I think headed from Anchorage, going uh, across that wide open uh, Pacific down towards the inside passage. And it was sunny and I, I think if I remember that day, there might have even been orcas that we had seen or um, I can't remember which, but it was a beautiful day. And I was having my devotional on top of the deck, just talking to the Lord, telling the Lord how much I miss my mother. You know, it's interesting about, even though everything's so beautiful around me, I had to close my eyes when I talked to him. You know, nature is kind of those trinkets that God gives. Uh, but it, eventually at some point, even, in, even in your, if you're in the most beautiful mountains or ocean or lake, at some point you have to close your eyes because inherently you know he's so much better that these just point to him. And so I closed my eyes and I remember asking God something. <laughs> I, I said, Lord, I need encouragement. <laughs> it's funny, I was telling God how to counsel me, you know, how to care for me. <laughs> but I remember going, Lord, I need encouragement. You know, I grew up in Florida, so if you were out in the ocean, it was terrifying to think of a storm coming up and you being stranded and your ship, go, you know, your boat getting capsized because if you saw Jaws, which I did at 10, you were terrified of the one scene of you treading water and that scene of the shark coming up underneath her legs, if you remember that. And that every Floridian kid knew that scene and was terrified at the thought of being stranded. You know, one of the worst biblical passages is when Paul said, I was in the open sea, left for two days and two nights. I, I mean, I was like, oh no. But in, the, but in Alaska, off the shore of Alaska, the water's so cold. I mean, if your boat went down, you would die of hypothermia. It'd be kind of like that Titanic scene where you just kind of go to sleep and, ah. you know, the thought in Florida being stranded in the water, treading water, a shark eating you, that's one thing. But in Alaska, oh, you just go to sleep. 
<laughs> and so I thought, okay, I'm not worried about a storm. God, would you send a storm? I want to see your power. I've heard of your power in the sea. I've never seen it. I, would you send a storm? And I'll never forget, I felt like the Spirit answered yes. Now, it's interesting. I didn't hear a voice out loud. I just felt a strong impression. Okay, yes. And so I told my father. My father came up. I said, Dad, just get ready. I just want to let you know I asked God to send a storm. I asked him to send a storm that would terrify us, but don't kill anybody. Because, you know, you can't pray prayers to kill people. You, you know that, right? I mean, that is kind of like Christianity 101. God, you don't pray to kill people. And so I, I, I said, Lord, send a storm, terrify us with your awesome power, but don't harm anybody. I didn't even know what I was praying. And I said, Dad, I think the Lord told me yes. He looked at me like he didn't even have a grid for that. Like, what? And so probably about five, six hours later, and I remember him saying, Alan, it's supposed to be sunny all day. Five or six hours later, a storm hit. They were cresting waves, 19 to 32 feet. The boat turned into the waves. I tried to get up. I told my dad, I told you so. I tried to get up on the top deck and do that Titanic thing, you know, where you, you, you know, push into the wind. But the wind was so strong, it was pushing me back. I couldn't get to the front. So I went on a deck that was about four levels above the sea line in the front, and I took my dad. And we just watched these massive waves and the boat would go up. And when it would come down, the prop must have broken the top of the, the water because it would make this huge sound like a cannon, just like a boom. And uh, it, it was an old folks cruise. I was the youngest by at least 30 years. And so, the, you know, the geriatric cruise was put on sick alert. They were all sick in their rooms, throwing up. You know, nobody, nobody died, but, but um, my dad and I, I brought, had the ship basically to ourselves. I took him out on the front, and when those waves would hit the front of the boat, the water would splash over and come up, and the spray would hit us. And my dad, I, I'll never forget, he goes, I go, I told you, Dad. And uh, I remember my dad laughing and going, you are nuts. You are crazy. I go, I go, Dad, you don't know how much the Lord loves to fascinate his people. He said, the Father shows him all things, and I show you that you may marvel. Well, that day I marveled. It lasted through the night, and the next morning the captain came on and said, I am so sorry, we did not see this storm coming. I have in 20 years have never hit a storm like this. He said, but we should have smooth sailing from uh, this point on, and I kind of had a little twinkle in my eye. Maybe. <laughs>